Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time at long last for some Wizardry 8. I've been meaning to play this for a very long time, very, very long time, and unfortunately there's been a, a number of issues trying to get this game to record at all is a major pain in the backside, but I think I've got it sorted now. Additionally, the game's cutscenes have a lot of difficulty running on modern computers. And as such, when the game intro runs, it will be at a very small resolution in the middle of the screen, rather than full screen. Also, this is a somewhat older game. That was designed to play on a pre-widescreen monitor resolution, so like a 4x3 resolution. So it will look stretched out a bit, a little bit sometimes, and I hope you can all handle that. I got this game back in the day, way, way back in the day. I didn't pre-order it because I don't think it was actually available for pre-order. But uh, this game was advertised long before it was released. It took about a year or two to get released and the company had some financial troubles. And while I have not played any of the other Wizardry games, I very much got the impression that I would be playing something along the lines of Might and Magic 6 or Might and Magic 7. If we don't mention 8, it was shit. Might and Magic 9 is a little bit of a stretch because it didn't quite, it didn't feel like a Might and Magic game. It just, its setting was too consistent. It didn't have that weird chaotic feel that Might and Magic had. And we, uh, 10 wasn't even out at that time. So, without further ado, I believe the intro is capable of running. So let's look at that, then we'll gather our party before venturing forth. Hopefully this will tell you everything, and if it doesn't, I'll paraphrase what the old intro did. Let's enjoy it now. Before the beginning, the Cosmic Lords crafted three artifacts. First was the Astral Domine. Um, hello? What the... What happened there? Well... That seems to be completely broken. Huh, give me a moment. So, sadly it seems the original cutscene for the introduction of the game will play but will not record. <laughs> Wonderful, I know. Now, for whatever reason, there was also a separate cutscene for starting the game which no longer plays because it causes the game to crash and will not run on modern systems. And I think there's a, I think there's two possible cutscenes at the end of the game for two different endings, which I've never seen, and which now sadly cannot be seen. So I'm just going to go forwards and give you a brief synopsis of how the game begins. We are a bunch of heroes, gathered together by an ancient mook. And the mook took us to a great metal mountain which he described as a ship, a vessel. And uh, I remember from the old intro, you know, none of us believed when the old mook when he said such a mountain was a ship. And none of us understood how it would fly through the space between the stars. He took us into his mountain and to some place he called the control chamber. And there he operated some controls and the ship took off with a roar like a thousand dragons. We sailed across the space between the worlds until eventually we were spotted by the ship of the big bad evil villain who assaulted our ship and we have crashed and shipwrecked. The old mook sadly didn't survive and we've just crawled out of the smoking wreckage of the spaceship looking around going, where are we? What is going on and why are we here? So let's gather our party. We are, we'll have Gunhild Ormsdott here, the Valkyrie. We'll have Morundo Korugin, the Dwarven Warrior. We will have... an Elven Archer, nay, a Ranger, by the name of Phalias 2K, who goes by the nickname 2K for some reason. 
an old Mook magician by the name of Nay Chalasa, although his mates just call him Nate for some reason. If I call him Natch a lot, it's because the Nate feels a bit weird, and so Natch just comes more naturally to me. So occasionally he'll be Natch. We will also have a rowdy gadgeteer by the name of Tim, although his true name is Terry Lot. Most of you know who he is. And then finally, a fairy, a magical creature called Leah Fanwen, who people just call Leah. Let's recover consciousness on the shores of the, well, pond? Lake? I don't know. Difficulty level with settings are normal. Simplified NPC interaction will turn that off. I should probably leave it on, but I can't honestly remember what it does. Iron Man mode, no, because there's enough problems recording this game as it is. And now we awake here by some water. Right then. We need to have a plan to deal with this situation. First order of business is to scout the area. After that, we need to find one of the locals and determine where we are. I should mention that our small company of heroes are a very vocal lot. They like to talk about what's going on, about what they're doing. Oh, whoa, uh, mate, get some rocks in your gun. I'll explain that in a bit as well. Because there's something approaching just there under the water. Okay, they're going away again, that's good. I see a chest, let's go see what we can salvage from the wreckage. A healing potion, a feathered hat, a red potion, and a potion of light healing. No idea what they are, let's just take the lot. And there's something over here among the wreckage of the I'm burning to kill. All right, we have been attacked by a bunch of free crabs. Our heroes have not yet identified the crabs. And we're gonna fight. For now, everyone's just ready for attack. Nate is gonna cast a spell. We're going to go for a energy blast. Now here, we have different levels of potency. We can try a level one version of the spell or a level two version of the spell. That being said, while a second level version of the spell is more powerful, it will cost more power points and it will be harder for him to cast. So we're going to just go for a level 1 electrical blast as well. And then Leah will also go for an energy blast. With pleasure. Now to explain things even further, we have many schools of magic, which I will demonstrate here. We have fire, water, air, earth, mental, and divine. Nature has some fire magic, and Leah has some fire and divine magic. As they progress, they will learn more spells. Virtually every spellcasting class can gain access to each of the six schools of magic. They have a different variety of spells available to them, and some classes just better than others. You'll notice that Marundor and Gundhild have their attack red because they can't reach anything. If that's okay, the enemies were probably going to approach us. It's down to initiative. And there's our first successful spell cast. That's great. So this crab closed before Gunhild's turn, so she didn't get to us. Yeah, you blasting, let him sizzle a bit. Now, I would have liked to have taken some more time to talk over things, explain things, but we were under attack. You'll see here we have a nice little party layout for formation. We have the front, the back, the left and the right, and the middle. People in the front can attack out to the front and the sides, -ish, if there's nobody else here. People in the middle can attack out in these three directions, but they can only attack forwards if they've got long-reach weapons like spears or ranged weapons that will reach out in front. If we had someone at the back, they could use a reach weapon to get to the middle, but couldn't get all the way to the front. Our enemies surround us on multiple sides. You will see here we have two to the front and one off to the right. Over here. 
If we had someone on the flank to protect the people in the middle from being attacked, then the people on the... Sorry, if we had someone on the right here to protect the people in the middle from being attacked, people in the front wouldn't be able to reach over here so well. I am likely to change the party formation at some point very soon. For now, though, we will repeat our magical barrage. Understood. Uh, health something of 13, something of 12, something of 13. We do not know for certain Understood. the health values of these because we have not identified the creatures. There is a skill for that. This is a very nice in-depth game and I love it to bits. Let's play out the next round. Oh, that's practically, that's more than half his health. And, wow, 10.1 to the... Hold on there. Okay, it's okay, Tim. You keep shooting those rocks. Now, uh, Nate is very low on power. He cannot cast mm -hmm. Energy Blast. He could cast a Light Spell. And that is a green border, so that would be successful. But I'd rather preserve Understood. and defend. Leo could cast a heal wound spell. Now that is orange, so it's not very likely to be successful. We do have a wounded party member though, so we will make the attempt. Sometimes spells can go wrong. With pleasure. We're going to try. Come on, Leah. Standing by. Ready and really? Healing. Not not enough power for another healing spell. Two out of five. Okay, not enough power. Well then, let's explore this beach. There are some stones over here, which we will take and give them to Tim. Tim has a weapon called the Omni Gun. Omnivores eat everything. Omni Guns will shoot everything eventually after they've been upgraded and tinkered with enough. Tim is a gadgeteer. He likes to fiddle with gadgets and items and trinkets. Let's give 2K a very fancy hat to make him look a little bit more like a ranger. And we have some healing potions. Let's split these up. Let's give two to our Valkyrie. Many thanks. And uh, one. To our ranger, as they are the current party front line. Um, Nate has a scroll of magic missiles. Tim's got nothing extra special. Leah's got a dagger that's too big for her to use because she's only a little fairy. What we might do, okay, in that case, we will give 2K a dagger as a backup weapon to switch to when enemies draw close. And we do not want to lock so we want him to be capable of swapping when enemies approach. Right, we have potions of cure poison. I think we will give these to our more vulnerable party members in the mid rank. And poor Leo, this potion's probably almost half as big as she is. We have a potion of cure-like condition and five potions of moderate stamina. Warriors need stamina, otherwise they get exhausted, tired out, fatigued, even fall unconscious sometimes. So our frontliners will have that. Potion of cure like condition, we will give it for thematic reasons to Gunhild. When Gunhild and 2k reach an appropriate level, I think it's about 5th, they will begin to gain spell access and start casting spells. For now though, we're here on the beach with this crashed wrecked spaceship. Part of it has even collided with the side of the mountain there. And yes, this is an older game. I like the fact that we step up a bit and bob up and we go onto the metal here. And we get metal sounding footsteps when we walk on the wreckage. And there was something here in the water moving about. Some kind of unidentified creature. 
there's also something here in the water. What? Oh no, it's up there at the top of the waterfall. Let's continue to explore and see if we can discover those creatures that were patrolling through the lagoon. Obviously our characters are getting a bit drenched here, a bit wet, but... <clears throat> look at that sky. That is warm weather sky. That is kind of, you know, Mediterranean or equatorial sky. Oh, hello. What are you? Stand back and watch me fight. You might learn something. Ah, more craps. Now... Magical power does recover very slowly. Oh dear. Um, we'll have our spell casters defend as they do not have any appropriate spells ready. And 2K is looking a little wounded, so he'll drink a potion of light heal. I mean, Tim doesn't even have any bullets for his gun. He's just shooting rocks, but he's jammed in there, you know. It's a hastily adapted piece of battlefield equipment that he probably created himself and he is incredibly proud of it. The others think he's stark driven bonkers for some reason. And he doesn't always seem to hit very hard because these crabs have very thick shells. Now, I think Marundor is going to protect Tukred. And our casters are still waiting to recover. If we use that scroll of magic missiles, we can hit all three. We see the nice big green cone here showing us that it is a cone-shaped spell. I will not use that. I will remain defending because I imagine there is a much more dangerous situation where we are going to need that scroll. Whoa, that was close. Now, the problem with defending is that we begin the defense on our turn, I think. So now Marundor will attack. How's our magic doing? When we get enough magic points later on, we will begin to get to the point where we can actually see them regenerate over the course of the combat. For now, though, we're just going to have to fight and protect the squishies. Ah, oh, beautiful shooting. Also, he isn't switching. Why did he not switch? Does it work by default? It may do. Uh, so that's a swap. So... Huh. Well, that's a lock. Is he too far... Is he not quite close enough to watch my swap? Hmm. Well, we'll keep fighting. At this early stage in the game, fights might not be quite as varied as they will later on because we have less options available to us. And the wizards keep defending, the warriors keep fighting. Excellent. The fight is at an end. Ah yes, Tim speaks about himself in the first person, past tense narration, as if he's telling a story, like some kind of deranged Don Quixote character. I love it. The other characters each have their quirks as well. Now let's keep exploring around here in the water. And as we do, we will see that there is some deep water out here, which we simply cannot enter. It's too deep for us to pass that way. There is a path heading up here. If I go up that way, I will be in great danger. So I'm going to hold off and just collect a few more stones. I will come up here later on, when the party has begun to gain a few levels and some more experience. Now, every character is made up of a number of parts. We have ability scores. We have strength, intelligence, piety, vitality, dexterity, speed, and senses. They all do different things. Hit points, this is how much health we have. Stamina, this is how much stamina we can use before passing out unconscious. 
Load is how much a character is carrying. Now, the character's encumbrance is made up of two parts. The things they're directly carrying are factored into their encumbrance. The party items are carried by everyone, and their weight is divided equally amongst everyone, or I think proportionally based on their strength or how much they can physically carry. So there will be times when there are items that are kind of carried by everybody, they sort of pass them around a bit, we don't exactly know who's keeping track of it. It's kind of like a role-playing session, it's like, oh, who's got that potion of fire resistance we bought back in town? Oh, someone's got it, have you got it? No, if I, oh, well look, we haven't used it yet and someone's got it, so it's around somewhere, alright, I'll carry it for now then, you know. So there's, there's a bit of disorganisation going on. Look, these creatures have just crawled out of a crashed spaceship, it's a miracle they're possible of cognizant thought at all. Uh, so next we have magic. The Gadgeteer does not cast spells. The Gadgeteer does not get any spells. And we have resistances as well to magic of various levels. The Gadgeteer is more resistant to divine magic. I think that's because he's a Rabulf, which is a kind of wolf-dog creature. We have many skills. Let's pick someone with magical skills so we can... Oh, uh, he has locks and traps. He has scouting. Uh, we have magic skills here. She even has divine magic, so there we go. Um, we have close combat, range combat, artifacts, mythology, and communication. Everyone has these. Close combat is used for fighting things. Range combat is used for shooting things. Artifacts is for identifying items that we haven't seen before. Mythology is for identifying monsters and knowing things about them. Communication is for communicating NPCs. If a skill is yellow, it's because it's probably the highest in the party. Now we have schools of magic. We have wizardry, divinity, alchemy, and psionics. These are four different schools of magic. Wizardry is for wizardy spells, divinity is for priestly spells, alchemy is for alchemical spells, and psionics are for psychic magic of the brain. Many spells fall into more than one category. If we cast a spell that falls into more than one category, we will gain experience for the highest skill associated with that. So if I have a skill that is both in the wizardry and alchemy school, and that would probably be a water spell, and I, and I were to cast that spell with Leah, she would gain water magic experience, and she would gain experience with either wizardry or alchemy, whichever was the higher. Which means that if you have access to multiple schools of magic and spells that fall into most, it can be very harder for a secondary school to play catch up. As this skill, th this primary skill, which dictates a school of magic, dictates the level of spell access you have. The higher this, spell, this skill is, the higher level spells you will have access to. And the actual casting skills for the kind of magic dictate how effective the spell is when cast. Over here we have a number of weapon skills. We have sword, axe, whole arm, mason flail, dagger, staff and wand, shield. Modern weapon is for guns like Tim's Omnigun. And then we'll have bow which includes crossbows handling a bow or crossbow and shooting its arrows or bolts with deadly accuracy, yeah. And throwing weapons and slings. Each of these is governed by one or two ability scores. Strength, or dexter strength and dexterity for sword, strength and dexterity for axe, strength and dexterity for mace and flail, for example. Dagger, dexterity and speed rather than strength. Just get in there and go shook, 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 stab them lots, you know. Just getting past those defences, being quick and nimble. This skill section is for skills that nobody else has access to. If we can get any one of these ability scores up to 100, we will unlock a special skill in this category that we did not previously have access to. There is a separate skill for each ability score and they are all really good. And then here on this last page, we have a summary of our ability scores, uh, current personal effects like being poisoned or exhausted or unconscious and so on will be listed here. Abilities and traits. So these are from class and race. Berserk attack option. 
that is a uh, fighter option. I can't remember if that's a separate skill we click or something that just occasionally happens. All right. Also, from here, our character can literally change classes, right? So it shows level one fighter. If we click, no, not here. Uh, is it there? So we have name race. Uh, so no, there's another way we can switch class. But our characters can switch classes to other classes at some point. I'm not going to recommend it, and I probably won't switch classes. Every class has ability score requirements. And so we get a base ability score line for our race. Then we get some points to spend based on how many points we had to spend to get into the class in the first place and any leftover points we get to spend. Some race and class combinations can even end up with a deficit they need to work off over their first level or two. If we swap to another class, we lose all class abilities like stamina regeneration, may knock out opponents, things like that, a berserk attack option, or here merge items into gadgets. Yes, that's right. The gadgeteer can combine gadgets to make even more complicated gadgets. So for now, we're just working to survive. Here we have some kind of building, an edifice with lights outside. And if you're wondering why I'm recording this today, it's because I've been meaning to record it for ages. And I don't know if a video I've just uploaded is going to process in time for tomorrow. So let's just get inside the building. And it is Look, let's close the door in case it lets in a bit of a draft. Or something follows us from outside. How are we doing for magic recovering? Two, so you can do a magical blast again. Ah! Ready and willing. We can cast an energy blast or a heal wounds if we need it. So let's keep that in mind. I have a distinct feeling of dread. Oh dear Nate, what do you what do you think's happening? What's going on? What do you sense? What do your mook senses detect? Behold a creature. Well, there's something hostile. They were ready for battle. Oh yes, he also refers to everyone else in the third person as well. <laughs> Let's get another energy blast in there. With pleasure. Go for it. Understood. I have to declare all attacks and skills you set at the start of a round. If our target is destroyed, our heroes do switch to another target. Wow. We are eradicating these foes. Oh, apart from Lottery, you didn't shoot quite so well. Terry, Lot, what are you doing, man? Yeah, that's right. You sure move. Victory is ours. Now then. Let's continue. You'll notice these lights on the walls. They appear to be very um technologically advanced, something our heroes are not normally used to. So hints that this alien planet does have a degree of sophistication when it comes to mechanical gadgets. Although they've let a lot of moss grow on these walls and on the ceiling too. Yikes. And I hear more monsters, goozies, goozy oozes squishing about. What is that beast? Okay, what do we got? Lots of oozes coming round the pit. Good. This battle will be a true test of courage. Sadly, nature's out of power. Uh, Leah's got a couple of healing. She's got a healing spell in her, but let's wait till someone else gets injured, because it might be one of our more vulnerable members. These two are going to come round this way, so I am going to move 2K to this flank. Come on. Right I can also order the party to move. I'm not going to do that just yet. Yeah. 
Okay, it looks like they're coming around the front, in which case we can redeploy two play to the beginning of the party. That screen there appears to be very bright. Is it a light or something else? Is it monitoring or something? Could it be monitoring our pathetic progress? Okay, that's healing required. I am Except she is a Valkyrie, and Valkyrie gets a special ability to almost but not quite die. With pleasure. Cheap death. So she'll have a chance to once go down and not be quite dead. I can't I think it's like it goes on to her stamina next and then kills her. She's just unconscious during that time. And listen to that music pounding away. Okay, her enemies are coming closer. Let's refocus our attacks on a single foe and try to absolutely slaughter it. Well, we succeeded at a healing spell, so that's always good. And I will definitely be looking into this Berserk attack option very soon. Alright, what have we got left? One divine, one fire, not enough to cast anything. Now you. Berserk attack. I can't remember what the difference is, but go. Oh, look at that. I'm on it. <laughs> He's so depressed. I don't know if it uses more stamina or what it does. I honestly can't remember. We have no spell power left, we will continue to fight. Also... Oh, we just got the up. Reset is just to reset at the beginning of pulling this up like right there. Oh, that's a relief. I'm still alive. So characters are increasing their skills by use. We have a bow. Let's give it you. to our Valkyrie as a backup weapon. And she'll probably need some arrows to go with it at some point. These are crossbow bolts. Someone successfully identified them as crossbow bolts. That's brilliant. Uh, Nate identified them by the look of it. And these are arrows. We'll give her some arrows and equip them. Now, um, I want to swap lock on that. We don't want to, we want them to be, there's a setting to automatically swap um, when enemies get close enough to hit for close combat. So now we're inside the building, let's take a look around. There are strange lights shining from panels in the ceiling and even in the wall over there. I would say very soon we may be able to risk going outside. I should absolutely save. Let's save the game. No, 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 no. Save game. Uh, we'll call it... Once more for old time. For old time's sake, I've been playing this ages and I've been meaning to play it. There we go. Bosh. And now, of course, we have a save we can load. Now, there are hidden objects in the game, and our characters have a chance of spotting those objects based on their um, senses stat. The Ranger also has a scouting skill. Determines the range at which a ranger can search for hidden items or secret doors. Scouting also forces the range the party will detect camouflage monsters and those approaching from the sides or rear. So this will help pre prevent us from being ambushed 
and it will also help us to find hidden objects and items. You can't get through this door, no matter how hard you try. It's securely bolted on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Before Dark Souls, even before Dark Souls, there were games where there were doors that do not open from this side. Here is a beautiful crystal. A glowing, shining crystal that hangs in a lovely metal setting from the ceiling. A setting that appears to rotate. Oh no, no. No. Oh yeah, yeah, it does rotate, okay. So it rotates based on the view, or is it, is it, does it just go four ways? Is there a fourth one? Like, is there a... Ah, yes, I think it's a, a four-way, four branches rather than... Okay, so we're not... It's not a cheaply rotating art asset. Let's head into these tunnels and see what we can find. There's a chamber up ahead. Now, there are wooden posts supporting the infrastructure. So, this isn't entirely high-tech. You know, this isn't all made up of, like, you know, concrete and cement and things like that. Oh, hello. I've sighted a creature. You certainly have. Found something. Oh, what was it? Oh! Some sticks of dynamite. Unidentified. to kill. Okay. Nature is a little in the dark, so let's just cast a light magic spell for the experience. Understood. And we might as well fire off a blast of energy. With pleasure. Let them come. Queen There's still one dwarf in this party who yet draws blood. And now we have a magical light with a beautiful little light icon up there in the corner. Light power one, 722 turns remaining. We win, naturally. More experience? We're learning. So I'm gonna go back to hit. Oh, Look, hello. It might kill Look us. at the size of those rats, they are ginormous. Good, this battle will be a true test of courage. All right, castles on the defensive. There's five big, massive rats coming. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I'm a good boy. You all know what I was thinking. Well, English people know what I was thinking. <laughs> the rats are so large, but one of them I cannot even get past it while you can now. Oh, mate. I wonder if it's less accurate. Oh, that's bad. Okay. We're going to pull you back to the back, because that fifth like rat that. has gone around, and it may indeed try to slaughter us. I could go for a move action. If I want to move, I can select walk or run. Or cancel it. The move action will wait until I think the slowest party member's initiative or something. Or, no, no, no. It waits until the first party member's initiative, then we begin moving. And a little a, a, a bar will appear showing how much movement we have left. As we move along it, party members will begin to lose their turn, depending on how long we spent moving. Running is quicker, but it can also cause some turns to expire more quickly as well. So currently, two players moving at the end of the turn will hope he survives. Oh, where are you going? Are you trying to find a way around to us? Oh goodness! I think it's time, time someone heals me. I'm inclined to agree. And that rat is in the wrong place because she's still got bow salt. Well, it's dead now. Okay, lady, look. Clearly, is it? Is it here? It is here. But there's an automatic swap somewhere here. Where here we can unlock. Right. Let's hope that rat comes charging for us. And that we can locate the R for one. It's not quite arrived yet. It's just that little bit too far away from our own girl's arms to reach. Excellent. And 
there's another one around here somewhere. She does not have enough power left for a healing spell. Um, how are we... Oh, that looks wrong. Uh, map. We are here. Okay. So we should be exploring up this way. So this place, full of slime and oozes, is probably been long neglected. You know, no one's been cleaning up here for a while. The rats are whoa. Look over here. It's ferocious. Big ass back back and watch me fight. You might learn something. No spells. A light spell, no energy blast. Okay, fine. We're just gonna wait. Let's get him right to the back again. In fact, I should think that a right there. A regular formation change after this fight. Victory! Victory is mine! You're alright, lady. Steady on. Look, he shot it with a rock and it wasn't even damaged. That's how hard that bat is. So, 2k is now at the back of the party, and in rather poor health, we'll be looking to fix that at the very first opportunity. This is clearly a dangerous edifice. Lady Swamp. There we go. Not enough for... Ah! We will cast a healing spell. And we will hope that it works. With pleasure. Because she's a bit of a bumbling idiot when it comes to magic at the moment. At least it only failed. Spells can backfire and all kinds of horrible things can go wrong. Excellent work. Victory right. is ours. I think we need to find ourselves somewhere to rest. There's a brightly lit chamber, yet there's a candle. Who lit Found this something. candle? There are crossbow bolts. And we want to be careful, because as I said, there are many treasures hidden in Look here. Look there. Where? Ah, some kind of powder. Sneeze powder. Excellent. We can throw that at our enemies. Look there. Ah, there we go. What is it? Arrows. Excellent. I think we're in too much danger here. We've got a badly wounded party member. Let's go back outside and rest. Maybe the denizens of the monastery will not follow us to the beach outside. some point. We've got to be near to leveling, actually. Let's see. Um, oh, so close for our warrior. But some other party members really need that rest. And while we'd have the shelter of the walls to prevent us from getting... I want to... I want to... Right. Let's move 2k to the back on a semi-regular basis. There is something Look over up there. here. It's ferocious. And it seems to be a powerful opponent. We've had a warning that it's ferocious. Our characters will comment on if they feel that a monster is beyond their abilities. Um, let's at least get a little bit of rest in and then come back and deal with it. Now, the way this game handles resting is quite interesting because we can interrupt the rest process at any point. There is a tune that plays, and we get a nice little screen. Let's close the door so that anything following us doesn't come outside. And actually, we might want to explore that path up there soon. Let's rest. Okay, our casters are now fully replenished. Others of us are not yet Ready in full health. And so let's attempt a healing spell. Excellent. Now, Marundor's not at full health yet, but he's healthier than anyone else, so we can reasonably continue inside. It would also be nice to go and explore over there at some point. So let's rest again. 
Okay. And I'm going to save. Wow, it's been ages since I last played this game. 2006 was that? Surely not. Maybe 2016. Now, I should warn you all, this is a long game. I've never finished it, and I don't know that I particularly plan to play the whole game on camera. What I think I'll do is play through this opening starting dungeon, which is over there behind the rocks hiding, and then see if there's enough appetite among the viewers to continue watching. Look there. Some more rocks. Well, we'll have those. And I'm trying to get tucked in behind this rock here. There are many, many foes approaching. They look like giant crabs again. Soft shell crabs, in fact. Good. This battle will be a true test of courage. All right, let's get an energy blast going. Understood. And we'll fire at this one. Understood. Oh, 25 health, that's insane. I want to at least try and get... I'm, I could try for a level 2 energy blast. I am not going to try for a level 2 energy blast. Okay, five crabs. If only we had a sleep spell. Because spells like sleep spells target enemy groups, so we would get all five. Oh no! The spell backfired! <laughs> he broke character! Terry Lot broke character. Sometimes the spell backfires can have a bit of a pause while it's picking a target or deciding if it should target anyone in the party at all. Crab apples? More like. Well. Well, damage! That's a warrior. Okay, we'll try again, just blasting them and reducing their numbers. That is coming round to a flank. That's starting to be a problem. Whoop. And I am going to move the fighter round to the flank and get that to protect people. Uh, you, milady. A healing spell? I don't think anyone needs it quite yet. And you are going to have to wait to replenish some magic. But you do have a scroll. Um, can we get one? We can't get all four. We can only get three. So let's not use the scroll. We'll just defend for now. I should have used the scroll before they closed them. And that's on me. It's probably the most vital time that scroll would be useful in the early game. Oh, lady, you missed. That's tragic. We need some kind of spell to increase our chances of attack. Right. Okay. Let's keep up the set pattern for now. Okay. We got a healing target for Leah there. Right, I want you to heal. I want you to defend yourself. Oh, that was really close. Right. Excellent. She can switch back to attacking the next turn. So, Gunhilt now attacks. We are not casting any spells this round yet. Eventually we'll reach a point where, on some rounds, we'll have so many spells to cast, we won't know what to do with them. Oh, wait. You can get back to the front. You see the bullet there hovering in midair, spinning it on its way towards the target. There we go. Now we fight on. 
it is very possible to lose the entire party in this fight because if you just walk right up here going oh hey what's up this path here without going into the monastery first and getting a bit of experience you could be in for a rather rude shock Excellent. How exciting. I think I'm improving. Oh, don't worry, you're doing fine. My aptitude increases. Our hero has achieved great things. So, here we have this lovely little coppola, but let's do some leveling. So, Terry Lot has leveled. He gets six ability points to place. I'll put a point in dexterity, a point in speed, but we know Tim's not all that fast, so we won't be putting points in his speed very often. Uh, point in intelligence, because we know he is a bright chap. Um, bit in senses, so that he won't overlook things too much. A uh, bit of strength to try and catch up, and a bit of vitality as well. There we go. Now we get some points to place into skills. As you may have observed, we already were gaining experience for skills, and skills are leveling up independently. Skills level up by use, but when we level, we also get some points to place in skills to control the, you know, the direction in which they level, in which skills are going up. He may need to throw things, and keep shooting his gun. Uh, give him a bit more mythology, so he can learn more about the creatures. And artifacts, because he likes gadgets and fiddling around and looking at things. There we go. Uh, Nietzsche, the magician, will want some intelligence. Give him a little bit of piety as well, because he's got some faith, you know. A uh, bit of vitality, a bit of strength, and finally, um, a little bit of speed. There we go. Now... Nature's fire skill is not high enough level to gain access to the higher fire spells yet. We would need his fire skill plus 10% of his wizardry skill to be, I think, 15 to get to the next spell. I can't remember. It? The formula is your base magic skill plus the overall mastery skill 10% to unlock. So we can have a water spell, a air spell, or a mind spell. I'm going to go with the Frost spell. Now, as you notice, this gives him spell points. If once we add another fire spell, we will gain more fire spell points. The amount of spell points we have for any magical category are based on the amount of spells we have in it, what those spells are, and I think our, our magic skill as well, and possibly our mastery skill. So we'll get Frost magic, so we can do some frost damage to people as well. Well, I say people, enemies. So we want him to get a bit more wizardry. And a bit more fire magic. A bit more water magic as well. Get that up to an 8 so we can start using water spells. Now, we are primarily using fire spells at the moment. But he will have water spells too. Get him a bit of mythology. And let's get these two skills up to level 1 just in case he ever has to use them. Because he does have his staff, doesn't he? So let's pop that up a bit as well. There we go. And now Marundor gains a level as a fighter. Um, we'll get him some health. Now vitality, hit points, stamina, carrying capacity. You know, all the things a warrior needs. And the likelihood of succumbing to a disease. So, you know, he shouldn't get sick too often. Let's get him a bit of dexterity. A bit of strength as a warrior. Um, that intelligence is very low, so let's increase it as well. Uh, we want a bit of close combat, a bit of axe skill, some mason flay skill for hammers and various tools he's had to use in the workshop. Um, a bit of shield skill. He does have some crossbow bolts and he might need to lob something at some point. There we go. Now our other half of the party are leveling on a slightly different track. They need slightly more experience points to level. So, the Valkyrie is a warrior with a bit of divine magic and the occasional ability to cheat death. The warrior is a warrior. 
the ranger pretty much what we'd expect, but gains access to, I think, alchemical magic after a few levels. For mage, is a magician. Oh, and they have level titles as well. The gadgeteer works with gadgets. The bishop isn't really a bishop. It's kind of a mage of all trades who has access to all magical schools, which seems very appropriate for a fairy. A kind of dabbling, um, uh, what do you call it? Found something. Look oh, there. Two potions of cure poison. Excellent. A sling. Always a good backup. Uh, an axe. And what's this? A cherry bomb. Um, cast fireball. Power free. That is incredibly powerful. We're going to have to up his throwing skill if we want to use it. And it's going to be very dangerous indeed. These, these explosive sticks haven't been identified yet. And potions of moderate heal. Okay. Excellent. Well, this is a nice place to rest. Uh, as you can see over there, there is a cliff face. And if I step back slightly... There is a doorway in that cliff, which we will eventually be reaching. And also a cavern there from which the water emerges and pours down the waterfall. This is a fairly nice place to rest, but I'm going to get back inside the building. Uh, it would be nice to get some magical power back. Be careful. Don't do anything stupid that will get me killed. In all fairness, he did nearly get killed a few times recently. And I have no idea how long this episode's been going on, but I'm enjoying it quite a bit. I'll probably have to end soon, though, so that I can start another one. So, yeah, I'm going to end this one here. Uh, just about to head back into what I previously called the monastery. For reasons which we will later discover. I hope you've all enjoyed this episode. And I will see you all in the next one, but let me know if you recognise any of the characters in our party. I hope some of you do. For now, though, I'm going to say goodbye and see you all soon. Cheerio, everyone.